we're going to be discussing the most important attachment we can put on board our ROV systems. That's a multi-beam imaging sonar like I have on our Revolution here. A lot of the waters we're diving in when it comes to a public safety operation are very low visibility. We're talking under five feet. And despite the great color filtering our camera is able to achieve in these murky waters, finding a target with only five feet of visibility can be a significant challenge. The addition of a multi-beam imaging sonar allows us to see through that turbid water and quickly identify the targets or anomalies that were already discovered on the side scan sonar, navigate to, and get a visual or a sonar confirmation on what that target is. We're going to be sharing a couple of different clips on different public safety operations that have found different targets over the years and share their stories on how the sonar was able to benefit the ROV operation. This first clip was actually filmed as part of a demonstration with the Delaware State Police, who has since purchased a Deep Trekker Revolution ROV. This demo was at one of their primary training locations on the Delaware River, and it posed some really unique challenges for the ROVs. It was incredibly high current and some of the lowest visibility I've been in in quite some time. But we noticed something really exciting almost immediately upon splashing the ROV. On board the imaging sonar, we were able to see that there was a large object about 30 feet in front of us, and we wanted to inspect on what it was. Upon getting a bit of a different angle, we were able to really quickly determine that there was a car right under the pier we were standing on with a piling on either side of it. Now, this is really interesting because this is the exact location where the divers are training many times a year. Right under their very feet has been a car that's been down there since they believe about the 1990s. Using the imaging sonar on board the Revolution ROV, we were able to inspect, identify, and get better situational awareness on the vehicle, which Delaware State Police later recovered. And we're going to share some of that footage with you now. As you can see, we've got our lower frequency mode on our sonar. So this is at 1.2 megahertz right now, and we're kind of getting a good view of the situational awareness. As you can see, we have the vehicle wedged between these two pilings here, and I'm trying to take a look and figure out a best way to get to the driver's side, and see if anyone might be in that car. Now, you can see one of the challenges and the reason the Delaware State Police likes doing training and ROV demos here is it's a very high current situation and it's very low visibility. We can barely see the end of our grabber here. So I'm gonna be using sonar most of the time. Now we're in our high frequency mode, getting a better close up view on the structure of the car and how it's wedged between these two pilings from the dock above. So I'm just taking a look at the car itself and the structure and kind of being directed by the police team here on how they might be recovering this vehicle in the near future. They did later recover the vehicle itself it ended up being a 1980s or 90s Cadillac that they think has been down there since about the time the car was new because it disintegrated pretty quickly once we got it out and onto the surface there. But in this high frequency mode, you can see the level of detail we can get even from a bit of range here and how little our camera is doing in these murky environments. So sonar becomes such a valuable tool. We've previously discussed how ROVs with sonars can enhance diving operations by monitoring divers in real time. This can be done for both training exercises as well as enhancing operational capabilities. In this next footage here, I was with a port police team out of California, and we were monitoring divers from a safe standoff distance using our Revolution ROV with an imaging sonar on board. These divers had in-helmet communications, and we were able to feed them situational awareness from the ROV and help them navigate on top of the mock recovery target very quickly and effectively. This is just one example of how ROVs, as well as human divers, can be used together to enhance operational capabilities. So in this case, this is a, a training exercise, and we have a mannequin or a recovery dummy here in the water. And we're using our Revolution ROV with sonar to monitor these divers in real time and they have in-helmet comms. So we're feeding them information on where they are relative to this recovery dummy in real time to get them right on top of that target as fast and safe as we possibly can. You can see actually even the lines going down to this mannequin and they're right on top of that target right now. So they're performing the recovery, they're getting on top of the target and we're gonna just let them do that for a second. I was recently part of a boat search in Fresno, California. Before I got out with the ROVs, they'd previously done side scan sonar scans of the lake bed and identified where they believed the boat to be. Now, funnily enough, the week before, they actually had another ROV system from a neighboring organization out on the lake, and it was unable to verify and find the side scan sonar target. And a lot of that came down to the topography of the lake bed. There was a lot of big mountains and valleys at the bottom of this lake, and the boat happened to have fallen in the middle of one of these valleys. 
Because our ROVs have an actuated sonar system, we were able to angle the sonar further down than most other systems could and very quickly and effectively scan this valley where they believe the boat to be. We were able to find the target in just a matter of minutes. We're approaching from the stern and we can see the motor on the back as well as the full profile of the ship. Now, one of the things the team wanted to know was what's the size of the ship. And with sonar, we have really good measuring tools. So we were able to determine that this was about 18 to 20 feet and it was obviously turned upright. So it was facing belly up in the water here. Now, if I scrub forward a few seconds here, we get a bit of a different profile. So this is approaching from the side of the vessel. And we can see on this angle each individual rib on the underside of the boat. So the level of detail we're able to get out of these sonars is pretty astounding. We can usually count the fingers on a hand from about 30 feet out, but it also goes outside of public safety as well. And we do a lot of inspections just with sonar as well. Be sure to check out some of our other content on our YouTube. But this is a pretty cool situation on where we were able to find a boat using our ROV where many other systems couldn't.